All right, we're in our fourth episode of Getting Started with PRTG. This time, the focus on Linux. I just want to review where we've come from before we dive right into creating Linux sensors. What I've got is I've got uh, the hosted cloud version of PRTG, this hosted probe sitting somewhere in Europe. And we talked about the architecture of this, installing a remote probe in my house. Now, once we did that, we identified the probe device, which is the uh, computer, the Windows 10 computer that's hosting the probe. Then we went through and set up SNMP sensors around my entire house, uh, monitoring the wireless access points. I talked about standardizing the naming convention and the sensor types that you're using. Talked about three different ways that we can set those up, switches and the firewall. And again, there's no shortcut for just the time well spent in organizing your monitoring system well. I then jumped into the Windows world with WMI, which is the language of Windows, the Windows Management Instrumentation, which allows you to monitor a lot of the specific elements hosted on a Windows computer. Whereas Windows deals with LMI, <laughs> LMI, what am I saying? WMI, Linux deals with the world of SSH. Now SSH being the secure shell, which is a command line way of managing a lot of the elements, all of the elements in your Linux world, which is often hidden by the graphic interface that we see right here. I installed uh, the version 20. This is my first time actually installing the version 20 of Ubuntu server. And I was aghast to see it come up to a graphic interface. And I'm like, no, give me my command line. And, and just to, to have full disclosure, I opened up the terminal prompt in the GUI and it didn't even have the IF config command. I was like, what? So I, so I immediately was like, okay, we've got to install the net tools, get my command line tools back. It's it, What's funny is watching Windows go more towards command line as PowerShell takes over the world and Linux move more towards GUI. I'm sure there's some kind of strange counterbalance happening. Uh, but I also, again, in full disclosure, this new ver I mean, the new version of Ubuntu did not have SSH installed as one of the default options. Now, now, granted, I installed this in a little virtualized environment. Sorry for all the bouncing around here. A virtualized environment just using the easy install. So I, I just let it go as default. So it did not even have the, uh, the SSH server installed on this when I first started. So the only two things that I've done here let me breathe for a second, is go and install the net tool so I can do a lot of the command line, figure out the IP address, and install SSH, which is the essential element for PRTG, right? So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create yet another group. I'm going to add a group and we will call this Linux, right? Um, now underneath here, I'm going to go and set the credentials for the Linux SSH based systems. You can see I'm uh, going to turn off the inheritance. Uh, the user account that I created on here uh, was Jeremy. I'm not going to tell you my password, uh, but it is right there. Now it's it's uh, it's coming up and saying, hey, do you want to do you want you know for WBEM? Do you want to do this? I'm I'm not using WBEM. I'm using SSH, and I want to elevate the permissions. I want to say uh, elevate this using. Uh, Jeremy as the user account and the password will be my super secret password that I type in there so that when PRTG does log in and try to scan for what sensors are available on this Linux device, it can. Now, I've added the group, but I need to add the device for the specific server. So this will be my Ubuntu, uh, I think, uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, right, 20.04. Uh, is the current version that I'm using right now. And the IP address, I got to remember, it was 192.168.1.192.168.1.192. There it is. 192.168.1.192. Right now it's DHCP assigned just for this demo only. Um, my, my actual uh, Linux devices that are in my house are running two things. Just This is just bonus FYI. I run HASS, uh, ha uh, the home automation system, uh, .io, awesome free home automation. That It's literally like a private Alexa or a private uh, you know Amazon hub to where you can have all of your, your power devices, right? Your light switches, your automated TVs, your Rokus, everything kind of controlled from one place. You want to get that HASS.io free, right? Um, and I run a Plex server for those of you media fans so you can rant, manage your own media library. So I'm going to run auto discovery on this. Actually, I should have done that. 
um, when I was uh, talking about my little off-tangent thing of Linux devices. Uh, so let me pause, and then we'll come back and see what it discovers. All right, auto discovery has completed, and take a look at this. Uh, a few sensors popped up. First off, it replaced my name with the actual host name of the device. Ping sensor, now we've got SSH disk free. Inodes, which is the file system. We've got the load of the processor, memory info, and the ability to add more SSH sensors. Now I noticed that we've got some alarms and that's okay. A lot of times uh, alarms will happen because for example, some of the things that it's monitoring are below the error limit of 10% free space. You can see that in the little error message that pops up there. That's again, why auto discovery is great, but why tuning is gonna be a big must for this. And we've talked about this before on just you know allowing auto discovery to be your only Avenue is not going to work for long. Uh, mem info, if you look at this, it says uh, the device you want to monitor is not compatible. The sensor can't parse the reply data. Welcome to the world of Linux. Um, when updates are happening, new things are happening, a lot of times we may have to tweak SSH or the way that we're monitoring the various elements. Uh, based on whatever updates are there. And that's and that's going to be true of just about any operating system that you're working with. Now, I want to show you this. This will be the last thing I mention on this. Click on Add Sensor. I'll type in SSH, and you can see that there's plenty of SSH things that you can monitor. I want to draw your mind to this as well, SSH Script, SSH Script Advanced. It's where you can actually create a little script right there to SSH into the device and do something whether it would be uh, pull some information, gather some information, or even things like, I mean, if you look at this, SSH remote ping, where you can SSH into the device, ping another device. Now, the reason that might be cool is because you might have uh, a, a Linux device. I mean, it could be, um, oh, why is my mind blanking? The firewall, the firewall that everybody uses. It starts with a P. You know what I mean, right? The, the firewall. Uh, and you could SSH into that, and then from there, ping some internal devices to detect if it's online or not, depending on, you know, this situation. Why, I keep thinking Plex, but it's not. PFSense, PFSense, that's the firewall, right? So we could do a remote ping. We could, you know, let me, let me just show you this. I click on disk free. Now the auto discovery went through and added everything, but I might say, well, you know what? I just wanna, I wanted to monitor this, or I, you know, let's, let's look at the root of this. Now, you know, keep in mind, I've got virtually no directories here because uh, I just did a, a vanilla install of, of uh, Ubuntu just to, to do this demonstration and show how to add these different devices, right? So this is our way of managing uh, Linux devices and keep in mind that uh, SSH is specific to Linux. We're diving into it. You can add SNMP to Linux and get hundreds of other sensors as well. And oftentimes based on the load that you have, it may be more efficient to use the SNMP sensors. It's easier on your Linux box and it's easier on your monitoring system because it's just that simple ping to gather the information about the device. All right, I'm gonna go in and acknowledge these alarms just for the time being, because I'm gonna get tons of emails and pings on my phone every single time one of these things happen until I have a chance to go back and tweak each one of these things. But at this point, we now have Linux added to our monitoring fold. Keep it simple.